Today's video is brought to you by Blacksmith Supply, the new home of the steel grinder. A tomahawk is essentially a small axe, and if you like making axes, you will probably enjoy today's project. It's a little bit more complicated than a lot of tomahawks are. It's got a spike, so you're working on both ends instead of just a wrapped eye. And I will include some decorative file work and chisel work just to make it a little bit more special. So let's get started on today's project with a piece of 5160. This is inch and a quarter round, about four inches long. The exact size and shape of material doesn't really matter. You could certainly do this with square bar, rectangular bar. You could use 4140, 1045, whatever steel you like to work with. By forging the bar down into a rectangular cross section, it's going to be a lot easier to punch and get an accurate eye in the tomahawk. Your punch is going to last a lot longer if you cool it down frequently, so I dip my punch in water pretty regularly while I'm punching the eye for this. By turning the piece end to end, you tend to cancel out any irregularity in the way you're punching. If your punch isn't perfectly straight up and down, you'll be punching crooked. But by turning it, that helps even that out. Looks like we got a nice eye punch cleanly through, so now it's going to be time to drift. I do want to put some little ears on this that increases the surface area for holding the handle in place. I'm going to use the cross peen hammer with the drift in place to do that.
By fullering either side of the eye, I start the transition for the blade and for the spike, and this will make it a lot easier to forge these in the long run. Tool steels have a narrower forging range than mild steel does, and it looks like I have overheated this just a little bit, and that's caused a crack at the end. There's not a good way to save this, and even if I forge welded it back, it might not take care of all the problem. So I'm going to cut that piece off, and the blade of the tomahawk's just going to be a little bit shorter than it might have been otherwise. Try not to cut all the way through on the hardy. That's a good way to damage the hardy or your hammer. So if you can break the piece off at the very end, that's the best way to go. Trying to get as much length on this blade as I possibly can. I don't have as much material as I would have liked after that little overheating incident. Reinserting the drift anytime you're working close to the eye will help prevent damaging the eye while you're forging.
After shortening the cutting edge, I've got more material than I need for the spike. I'm going to go ahead and cut the spike off to help balance it a little bit. Now remember, try not to cut all the way through in the hardy. That's a good way to damage your hammer or the hardy. I screwed up on this one. Drifting over the open vise helps prevent damaging the ears of the axe, and it's a pretty good way to go. It's a little bit high ergonomically, but otherwise it works pretty good. Now this drift is getting pretty hot at this point. The hot mill gloves are just barely enough to keep me from burning myself, and I've easily burned myself through the leather gloves. So be careful when picking up a drift that you've been working with. But I don't like quenching the drift because I don't want it to suck all the heat out of the eye every time I insert it. So leaving it fairly hot is a good idea. I've been at this for about three hours and there is a lot of clinker in this fire that needs to be cleaned out. So I'm gonna clean that out then I'm going to put the tomahawk head back in the fire, bring it up to a dull red, and then let it cool down with the fire while I go take a lunch break. With the head cooled off, it's time to do a little grinding. We can do this all with an angle grinder and files, but I've got something over in the main shop that I think is gonna make this a little bit easier today. And to do our rough grinding, we're gonna use a new grinder sent to me by Blacksmith Supply the sponsor of today's video. This is the steel as an Alex Steel 2x48 belt grinder now being carried by Blacksmith Supply. Still being made in Australia by 84 Engineering. This is a nice compact little grinder. However, there is a 2x72 version of this as well. So I understand this will have an option for a stand that I think is just a bench top stand, but it will allow the grinder to flip 90 degrees so you can grind horizontally with it. This one is set up with a one and a half horsepower motor and a variable speed drive, so you get really good speed control with this, which is really nice. Blacksmith Supply did send me this grinder free of charge to take a look at, so we're gonna put it to work on this project and see how it works. The first thing I do while I'm grinding is worry about the profile of the axe. And once I get that done, I can worry about the other surfaces. If I want to grind them, you don't really need to grind an axe down to a smooth finish. Forged finish is just fine if that's what you like. This grinder's got the advantage of different size contact wheels on the platen attachment. And that gets into some of the curved areas very nicely. I started with a 60 grit belt and now I'm down to a 220 grit belt. For something like this, I think that's all the finish it really needs. I'm going to lay out and do a little bit of decorative file work. This is not something I do very often with axes, but I think it will really take this little tomahawk from fairly ordinary to something pretty special.
I'm working over the platen table so that the eye of the axe can recess into one of those big inch and three quarter square holes. I didn't have anything else quite the right size, and this is really hard to get things flat and level. Matter of fact, when I did the touch mark on this axe, it ended up getting a double strike because I really couldn't hold this flat the way I wanted to. People often ask what kind of oil they can use for hardening. I usually use a commercial hardening oil. But for this, I'm going to use just plain old canola oil from the grocery store. It should work just fine. I did test this with a file afterwards, and the file skates very nicely, so this got good and hard. And then I'll put it in the toaster oven for a couple hours at 450 to temper it. A little light wire brushing after hardening will leave this with kind of an antique looking finish, and I really like that finish for something like this. I'm not going to go back and try and polish up the whole axe head. I'll go through a 120 and 220 grip belt, just getting it close to sharp. I'm not going to worry about making it perfectly sharp at this point. I'll do that after it's completely finished. Now it's on to making a handle, and I'll do this in the basement wood shop. Again, the variety on this platen attachment gives me different surfaces I can work on while I shape this handle. A belt grinder is an amazingly efficient tool for making handles. I'm going to use a slack belt setting on this so I can do a final sanding on the handle. And that's with a 220 grip belt.
Well, that completes our little spike tomahawk made from 5160. I hope you had fun with this project. I know I did. It's nice to do something a little bit different, a little bit more ornamental. I like the way the file work and the little chisel lines came out. I would have liked for the chisel work to wrap around that central rib that I put in the file work. And I think I need to make a special chisel that maybe kind of has a curve built into it so that it tucks right into there, a little point on one end maybe. Have to experiment with that to see what really works the best. I like the shape of the ash handle on this. It's maybe a little bit skinny down here to hold on to, but I really like the look of it. And since this is probably less practical of a tool, even though it's made from good steel, properly heat treated, it's sharpened, very much a functional tool, it's probably more the kind of thing that's gonna hang on the wall somewhere, look good with your muzzle loader and your shooting bag, your powder horn, that kind of stuff. But it is perhaps a little bit thin down here. If I do another one, I'll probably leave the handle a little bit thicker. I do like the look of the knob and it will keep your hand from sliding off the end, but it really isn't all that necessary. Now, what are my thoughts on the steel 2x48 belt grinder? This is a good little grinder. I think it's something I'm gonna really be glad to have available in my shop. It's very functional, has a lot of versatility. This did not come with a regular larger contact wheel. Blacksmith Supply does have a five inch contact wheel available for this. I think I'll probably go ahead and order that this afternoon because it is something I would like to have for this grinder. However, I don't know if you can run any larger contact wheels on this. Because it's kind of a small compact thing, bigger wheels are just gonna get in the way and there isn't room to run those within the confines of a 48 inch belt. There's not a lot of room in here. So if you wanna run eight, 10, 12 inch contact wheels, you're gonna need a bigger grinder. There is a version of the steel grinder that's a two by 72 grinder, and that might be a better option if you wanna run bigger wheels. The big advantage to the 48 inch grinder, besides being less expensive, is the smaller footprint. This takes up a lot less bench space, and if you don't have a big deep bench or you're gonna put it on a stand that's gonna be in the middle of the shop and you have to work around it, smaller footprint might be nice to have. So thank you Blacksmith Supply for sponsoring today's video, and thanks for sending the grinder out. I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch today's video. If you'd like to provide financial support for the videos here at Black Bear Forge, you can do that through channel memberships or Patreon. Both channel members and Patreon members receive early access to the videos that I make. Patreon patrons also get the videos ad-free because the videos are hosted off of YouTube. So if you want ad-free videos, Patreon is a place you can get those. Thanks for watching. I hope you have time in your day to get out to your shop, make something, but stay safe, wear your safety glasses. We'll see you for the next video.